Neck of femur fractures cause significant morbidity and are associated with increased mortality. Neck of femur fractures, or hip fractures, are used interchangeably and are used to denote a fracture in the proximal femur. Neck of femur fractures are the most common fracture in the elderly, with an exponential increase in incidence with age. Most hip fractures are associated with a fall, although other risk factors, including decreased bone mineral density, osteoporosis, reduced level of activity, and chronic medication use. Fractures in the young are usually a result of high energy trauma. Neck of femur fractures in this video may be referred to as NOF, a term used by healthcare workers. Let's first talk about classification. Neck of femur fractures should be described anatomically. They are divided into either intracapsular fractures and extra capsular fractures. The capsule in this sense is a strong fibrous material lined internally by the synovial membrane. The fibrous layer on the outside of the capsule is attached to the acetabulum proximally and distally it attaches to the intertrochanteric line anteriorly. And therefore, we have intracapsular fractures, which occur within the joint capsule, proximal to the intertrochanteric line. These could be further divided into femoral head fractures or femoral neck fractures, which are divided into then subcapital, transcervical, and base cervical. Extracapsular fractures occur distal to the joint capsule and are divided into either intertrochanteric or subtrochanteric, below the lesser trochanter. It is then important to describe the fractures as being displaced or undisplaced, as blood supply may be affected. The relationship to the blood supply is very important. You see, the femoral head receives its supply via the medial and lateral femoral circumflex arteries, which form the extracapsular ring and give rise to the cervical arteries, the lateral being most important. There is also supply via the intraosseous nutrient vessels and the ligamentum teres. Displaced intracapsular fractures disrupt their blood supply and have a high rate of avascular necrosis, which is basically bone death of the femoral head, as well as what's called non-union, when the bones don't join up together eventually. On the other hand, extracapsular fractures maintain the blood supply to the head, thus reduced risk of avascular necrosis, and these fractures normally heal well. Some risk factors for neck of femur fractures, or NOFs, include the non-modifiable risk factors, age greater than 65, for having a family history of fractures, female sex, low socioeconomic status, and prior hip fractures. Modifiable risk factors include the medications that the person uses, such as thyroxine, bruzamide, proton pump inhibitors, and sedatives, because they increase the risk of falls. Other modifiable risk factors include osteoporosis, falls risk, reduced level of activity, and vitamin D deficiency. The clinical presentation is really inability to weight bear following a fall on the affected side. In the elderly, this is a very common presentation and presents with significant pain. It's important to consider other medical causes of the fall, such as a heart attack or a stroke. And it's also important to look for other injuries, such as knee problems, neck problems, or shoulder problems. Pain may be referred to the distal femur or upper knee. Non-displaced neck of femur fractures can firstly appear normal, 
Displaced neck of femur fracture, on the other hand, the leg will be shortened, externally rotated, with abduction. Muscle spasm contributes to the shortening of the limb. Whereas if you have a posterior dislocation of the femur without a fracture, you will have shortened leg, internal rotation, and adduction, adduction. Straight leg raise and hip movements are globally inhibited by pain. Neurological state is important to assess. Investigation and diagnosis. NOF is a clinical diagnosis. X-ray is important to gain further information to classify the fracture. Here is a normal X-ray. And here is a fracture of the left neck of femur. It is a subcapital fracture. Undisplaced fracture is difficult to see on x-ray, and so sometimes bone scan, CT, or MRI, which is gold standard, is used. It's also important to look at blood tests, specifically screening for osteoporosis, such as vitamin D and calcium. Treatment of fractures is very important. Early surgery within 24 to 48 hours is prudent. This allows early mobilization and rehabilitation, which speeds functional recovery and decreases the risk of other problems such as pneumonia, skin breakdown, deep vein thrombosis, and urinary tract infections. Patients with comorbidities, however, have an increased risk of mortality. Therefore, surgery may need to be delayed. Prior to surgery, appropriate analgesia is important. This is usually with a combination of a femoral nerve block and short-acting opioids. Whilst on opioids, it's important to check bowel motions. For intracapsular neck of femur fractures, if they're undisplaced intracapsular fractures, you treat by early mobilization with analgesia, but obviously surgery is done by internal fixation with either cannulated screws or dynamic hip screws. Displaced intracapsular fractures are treated by hemiarthroplasty. Total hip arthroplasty can be used if symptomatic pre existing arthritis is present or with those who have a few comorbidities and are actually high functioning. In children or young adults with intracapsular neck of femur fractures, reduction, either open or closed, and fixation is employed. Extracapsular neck of femur fractures, if they're intertrochanteric fractures, usually a sliding or dynamic hip screws are used and a plate system following a closed reduction on a traction table. Subtrochanteric fractures or a four part intertrochanteric fracture, which is complex, this is managed with an intramedullary nail. Complications of neck of femur fractures include many things. Firstly, death, especially due to increased mortality in the elderly, avascular necrosis of the femoral head, as mentioned, specifically in an intracapsular displaced fracture a dislocation of the hip surgery, the arthroplasty, loss of fixation, non-union, and malunion, lower limb thromboembolic disease as well. So in summary, femoral neck fractures are very common in the elderly and is usually a result of fall in the setting of osteoporosis. Neck of femur fractures can be classified into intracapsular fractures or extracapsular fractures. Early surgery is important to allow early mobilization and prevent displacement.